Under Nirhachi, his clan, the Aisen Gyoro, or Golden Clan, accumulated a monopoly over the importation of ginseng into the neighboring Ming, going on to become one of the preeminent trading partners with its southern neighbor. They also began to conscript Han Chinese troops to fight alongside them. Chinese troops were particularly valuable to the Jin because they were more familiar with European techniques in casting and using cannons. In 1637, a new part of the banner system was added, composed almost exclusively of Han Chinese defectors to the side of Nerhachi and the Jurchens, as well as those Chinese who were captured by the Jurchens during military campaigns of the years 1618 to 1622. Following the death of Nerhachi, his son Abahai, who also adopted the Chinese name Hong Taizi, consolidated the Jurchen tribes even further. In fact, he renamed them Manchu. As Hong Taizi explained, quote, Originally, the name for our people was Manju. Ignorant people call these Jurchens. Henceforth, everyone shall call us by our people's original name, Manju. Uttering Jurchen will be a crime. Using this revenue from the sale of ginseng, the Jurchens were able to acquire advanced weaponry, to hire military officers and advisors, including many from among the disaffected subjects of the Ming. Hong Taizi began to wage open warfare against the Ming itself, beginning in the fall of 1629. These were not mere border raids any longer. These campaigns, which demonstrated Manchu military prowess against the Ming, emboldened Hong Taizi to announce a major change in his polity in 1636, a symbolic change in the name of the dynasty. He changed it from the Jin to the Qing. This was a clever play on words and a deft reference to the traditional Chinese concept of five elements, that is, the idea of existence itself comprising earth, air, water, metal, and fire. The character Ming, that is of the Ming dynasty, contains the element of fire. This is shown in the sun component of that character. Thus, in accordance with the transformation of the elements, fire would certainly melt or destroy Jin or gold. But the new dynastic title, that of the Qing, contained the water element. And just as water extinguishes fire, so too would the Qing extinguish the Ming. So this symbolic name change was itself a declaration of war, and more than that, a promise to destroy the Ming. Conquest was very slow, however, and Ming resistance was steep. The Chinese general Wu Sangui in particular was holding the critically important Shanghai Guan, the Shanghai Pass, located at a critical strategic location along Ming defenses in the Great Wall region. In the 1640s, however, this military stalemate began to loosen up to the benefit of the Qing. Conditions in the Ming were taking a decidedly negative turn. One rebellion in particular succeeded in attacking and conquering the Ming capital in Beijing. This rebellion was led not by a Manchu, but by a Chinese rebel leader by the name of Li Zicheng. The last emperor of the Ming proceeded to hang himself in disgrace on a small man-made hill just behind the Forbidden City. After the death of the Ming sovereign, the rebel leader Li Zicheng announced the formation of a new dynasty, a dynasty forgotten by all but historians, the Shun Empire. News of the rebellion and of the death of the Emperor Chongzhen afforded the Qing a rare opportunity. General Wu Sangui, in what has been interpreted either as an act of complicity or of grave error, retreated from his post in Shanghai Guan in an attempt to suppress the rebellion in Beijing. The pass was left defenseless. As the Manchu forces passed through the boundary of the Great Wall, 
They came into the territories of the Ming not as conquerors per se, but self-styled as protectors of civilization. They came ostensibly to liberate Beijing from the rebels, to crush them, and to avenge the Ming sovereign. Very importantly, they did not have the blood of the last Ming emperor on their hands. After Qing forces occupied Beijing and destroyed the rebellion, they buried the Ming emperor according to appropriate Confucian ritual. And then, on October 30th, 1644, in the Western calendar, installed the child emperor Fulin at the age of six on the throne in Beijing. His reign title would be Shunzhi, Vanquisher of the Shun. <laughs>